So this is thinking about um, the retrieval client. And so in particular, the, the goal here is we, we um, thanks to Hannah, have a pretty long design doc. And we've gone through now a couple sort of larger group discussions and, and reviews and iterations on what we want in terms of retrieval. Um, there are a bunch of constraints that we've discovered through that process. Um, and so we've got two separate things that we should be, that we I think are using in terms of breaking our thinking here. One is what is the end goal? Um, and that's going to be a longer thing. And so maybe we can think of, you know, I think, I think the current aim is sort of like this stretch of like, get to something we're happy with at the end of the year. Um, and then there's also this sort of more immediate need or short-term goal of um, how do we test that we have the end-to-end -end retrieval flow for the connector uh, in, in particular. Probably we want to validate that that works for a file point. Um, we may also want to be able to validate that that works for IPFS content um, because I think there is some desire to be able to use this for um, Pinata or um, as an alternative to the current PhD setup for some time. And so the, the, the main trick now is can we untangle these requirements of what is you know, the direction and this longer term goal and what is things that we absolutely need in the immediate short term MVP uh, you know, for our ability to have any confidence that we have a working index retrieval system. What, what do we need to build for that first version? Um, and if we can uh, get that more limited set um, where we say, okay, these are the, this is sort of a initial thing that we want that we feel like um, ideally isn't, there's nothing that like goes in the wrong direction compared to where we want to tend longer term. Uh, and if there is like, those are things we should identify and make sure we're okay with like undoing or that we will need to, you know, that the, the we should make clear this isn't a design we want to stick with. It's just um, because we want to limit scope initially, we're going to do something in a different direction. Um, Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, so we're building this indexer. Yep. We're going to have providers running indexes. Yep. Who is going to initially use that? Like, does it just simply exist? And then we're like, oh, well, should anybody wish to retrieve with FileFind? You can do it this way and build something against this, and or are we going to like? Because obviously the original plan was like the gateways will do it. Um, it doesn't. It's not clear to me who is doing that now. So I'm trying to figure out. Like, I mean, there's when we think about like anything beyond like we want to prove that our implementations actually work together, which could be as simple as literally like a test run test case, right? That runs all the things. Who is the user? Yeah, who's our user for this thing? Yeah, beyond that. That's a fantastic question. And that really you know, falls back to the product. And so um, some of this is on us to help the product uh, narrow in on what the use cases of the, that we think we can support for a start. Sure. Um, there are, I think there remains a desire for some sort of gateway, either run by us or run by GAP developers. Longer term, think of the current people who are providing data that there, there's a few different places where file data is accessible. There are people who are fetching their data that they push to things like web free content or web free storage. And so web free storage is a gateway, right? In that sense, in that it, it provides an HTTP interface to pull that back out. So even if we're not doing it on IPFS.io, um, if we can provide a, either a library that is then used by web free storage and it pulls stuff back out, that's still, they would still like that. And so that, that type of, um, there is some uh, gateway run by uh, either a metaphorical DAP developer or one or both, so like a metaphorical in Kira, uh, is a place that would want to be able to get document content and would want to be able to have some hook in payment set up around that potentially. Um, you could also imagine desktop DAP apps that are doing it directly within themselves. Um, and you could imagine uh, this sort of generic retrieval thing, like, you know, ultimately someone like Brave, mm -hmm. uh, especially Brave Mobile, they want to only use retrieval and not run full IPFS things. Um, and so if they find this compelling, that could be a place that they would, they would find the sort of library. Although the like in mobile is its own thing, but I think uh, transient, right, are, are more likely to want to work with the 
the, the, the trick here, right, is that a lot of those transient plant variables are not there. So we shouldn't be prioritizing those too much because uh, beyond that, we should have architecture that eventually is going to potentially also get some of What are those, all those people we just mentioned, what are they doing right now? Besides web 3 storage, which I think is not doing anything in the software. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I think, I, think the, I think the reality is uh, very few people are doing directly in the software right now. But, like, uh, in your, uh, like, what are they doing to talk about the password? Are they running to like they're running to like it? Yes. And that means a full load. Yes. I mean, I guess that's not, you know, it's not an option for many of the scenarios. Um, do you mean on gateways or do you mean down? Or, or what? Well, we, 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 when you were talking about people who want to just run a client, that's how it's on the mobile. Uh, that's a whole different beast. Uh, so so the the current mobile setups, and I think this is like mobile opera and things like that that are mm -hmm. providing access to they go to a gateway, so they'll they'll just go to like either Cloudflare or they have or the deal one run one, or I think Opera they actually run one, but basically they don't have to handle that protocol, but they're not running it on the so they're wrong. And you know what somebody mentioned a few months ago about I think it was Chrome that wanted to start that making this point in some other language. In is, that, plus. is that related to any of this? Possibly. Because that's getting you integrated into more browsers. I would suggest, yeah, because I would suggest the one thing is like. Those the different user groups we just mentioned have very like web three dot storage is very they need a Go stack that will make these things or maybe a JS stack but like they're going to be making the actual retrieval calls anyone who's like a mobile client that's a JavaScript client the top stage it's not right. so I, I I think it's probably right to not prioritize the the things that should be done correctly in JavaScript yeah um, um, so so that that's sort of why we remain on gateways as okay. an initial All right. That's helpful. Um, but I think there are also lots of desktop apps potentially. Right. And also have, have access to those. Right. But we don't, we don't have access to those. Yeah. Uh, the, the other place, right, is like um, you could imagine that um, you've got sort of the three parties of like people running their app, the app developer, mm -hmm. and the app developer can make a server. Right, right. So the client, they have a JS client that they they can retrieve us from. Their although, although that's also a gap. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's a web too. For sure. There's my server, my server. And all these people, they're talking about IPFS currently are running to IPFS things eventually. And we are suggesting that if they want to use file client, they should stop running go IPFS nodes and use our thing that will get stuff. We have not suggested that. That's a longer thing. It's not the MVP, right? Okay. Because the MVP thing is not necessarily the fault. And I don't think mm -hmm. one would be like our indexer won't index like it was data this project. And then the until we write the provider. Yeah. 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 And also okay. cool. so, so that's long term energy. Yeah. Long -term. Uh, so, so so right now in our initial uh -huh. pitch is right, you want an easy way to retrieve file from uh -huh. So what problem does that solve? I mean, so we're we're sort of iterating through what we would hope in some sense if we had a dedicated product manager to really let's make this a smoother sure. path. Yeah. Um, beyond validation, which is a large part of what this yeah. initial value proposition is, you could imagine um, that this can be done um, either as a fallback or in parallel on gateways that currently are going to use IPFS. They would either strike out on their IPFS thing, or the Nginx actually forwards back the two proxies and sees which one gets first. Mm -hmm. um, right, the second one is the gateway that checks by the point. So there's kind of that it's in top one, not IPFS. Yes. Uh, this thing gets some time to run and try and get. Mm -hmm. Right, and that, that, that is the value add. I mean, it yeah. doesn't need to be fully integrated to solve that problem. Right? Yeah. Yes, it's more configuration work, but at this point, that's better than not having that. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I mean, my impulse, if we're going to, if, if we're going that direction, my first impulse would be to like track down all the web, all the gateway providers who we might be talking to on the idea of best gateway, web three storage, all them, the, what exactly do you want from us as a fallback product? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, with the assumption that they're not going to remove their existing IPFS section. Mm -hmm. But right now, is there any gateway that is switched to data from partners? Mm -hmm. like directly? So we would be 
be adding an additional feature to pay us, which is which is cool. Huge. <laughs> yeah. Because you're at least two gateways you would be able to fetch from my test Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you have digital and browsing with the same. So then this is, yes. which is also nice. Yeah. Because like now you can only yeah. I mean, this was our original proposal that did it seemed to do any of this and be parties in the like, <laughs> well, well, was it prim but that was primarily not like were there issues against that MVP? Like everyone seemed to think the milestone one was pretty concrete. And the worries were what is the longer term. MVP yeah, there's also, also, I mean there's you know, I think there's With a general. What I heard. Maybe I'm considering or like pretending. I there, are, there. Are, I think there are folks who have a general dislike of how much we're relying on gateways in general, yes. and this just sort of gets folded into it. And it's like, well, if we did this, I, we are not just to double check. The whole estuary proxy thing is like totally off the table. Yeah. People have rejected it. Some yeah. people rejected it. Okay, cool. Um, uh, the, the you know the thing that people liked about that is the idea that a go IPFS node can now talk. To an arbitrary go IPFS that can talk to uh, okay. yeah. but through effectively the gateway. <laughs> it just happened to work at IPFS. Right. Yeah. So so this was this was a conversation that I had a couple times, which is look, the the, the thing that we've heard is we should support the ability of content that is not really available, that is, you know, you have to pay to increase the development yes. to become available as part of the first, you know, as, as part of you know, not this MVP, not the one month or two months, but as that year slash like you know working story. And what I think part of actually was alluding to, and I haven't heard this from unknown firms so far, is that part of what that meant was not simply that content should become available, which is one of the concerns. Is right, okay, if there's this weird additional thing of oh, you didn't, you know, you didn't push it into file fund with the right flag, and so now we can't read that enough. Is not going to get one story to like try and explain to users, right? Sure. The other half of that is there actually is like a, a direct goal of we should start exposing the complexity on the pulling outside of, yeah, you're going to have to have a wallet like that if you're wanting this sort of content potentially, right? That the, the complexity of hooking up the wallet and the developer potentially eventually needs to pay for it is something that should come as part, part of that whole first story so that it's rather than spring that later of. of Oh yeah, the first version, yellow is just having all the costs, and you don't notice that. Oh yeah, great, yeah, you can get out of content. That that if you do that, and people start lying, and then you're like, actually, we're stopping our gateway because it costs a lot. You guys don't have to pay it. Maybe we don't even have that other solution. How do you set that up to do the same thing? That that's a pretty bad experience to, to transition to. And so the goal is expose that you know there's potentially some cost on these retrievals because miners make their money um, initially. So that the the paradigm is yeah. You're Hopefully, lots of the initial articles will be free, or you know, in many cases, you know, a PL gateway will subsidize them, but you need to be prepared and have a setup that can support it. Yeah. Um, so, exposing that complexity, I think, is actually like a part of the thing. Could we give Andrew a minute to see if he has anything to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, Andrew, do you have anything to say? I'm just I'm just listening at this point, trying to trying to figure out where the conflicts are going to be uh, with trying to build this client. So nothing <laughs> nothing specific. I'm I'm just wondering what the, if if we've received a lot of pushback from the stewards yet as as far as doing a separate client versus building something into IPFS itself. There's been a little bit of pushback, but but the 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 flip side of that is that we haven't been given even any direction of how you would go about building it into IPFS, right? So we asked, what is the way that you would have other transports in IPFS? And the response was, that's too hard, but we will give a proposal for how you delegate the routing part. Um, and so that then was seen, I think, by everyone as, and, and Juan continues to push on, there shouldn't be a single client. Um, but, but between that single client and, well, just we can't even estimate the order of magnitude of what it would take to build this into the current Go IPFS has meant that people seem pretty okay with there being a secondary program. Um, and this is also the, you know, uh, there's been sort of this theme for a year or two of 
it was good that we called it Lotus and not real file point. Like we shouldn't have a single implementation. We should have an implementation. There may be multiple IPFS things, um, right? Though IPFS is not the only IPFS. Right. I guess it's more of a question of is IPFS, do we want to see IPFS as a product that's built on top of a group of libraries that's recomposable into other different products like this client? Or do we want to see that IPFS could be something that's configurable enough to build such a client? And it sounds like we really want to see a bunch of different libraries which are composable into separate products. IPF, Go IPFS being one, um, our reference client being one. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's right. Um, and I think the other thing is like within the world of IPFS, and, and I think for me, the core of what IPFS is, is like content routing. Like IPFS helps you find content by content ID um, and, and interact with it. And Go IPFS is like the full loop that also is a provider and um, caches and does a bunch of stuff. There, there seem like there's a whole lot of use cases why you would want something that just does the retrieval part of that. Um, and it's unclear if it's faster to build that as a lighter weight thing that has much less machinery or trying to tear that out of the current Go IPFS. Um, and, and try to sort of just to be honest, yeah i mean my own approach to it andrew is that like the reason that you can't just build it into go ipfs is that go ipfs actually has a solution to a fairly complex problem where like how do you find your content choose where you're going to fetch it and then like fetch it like and like and and be able to like do that for large blocks of content that are like dags that you're going to fetch over time and like, that's what I think the, the problem is, like, I would hope that eventually that's what this retrieval client is. And then once it's really a complete solution, we would rip out the existing system of IPFS and put it in there. Um, yeah, like, it, and what I'm thinking about is something that's, that's like higher level than, um, than like a single deal, right? Like, it's like the, the, the assumption is you would be making very high level requests for content without a person you're asking from or like a limitation of a single transfer, which is similar to how you know bit swap sessions and the Merkle back service works. Um, you know, and then this thing would eventually just look at all the find all the possible ways to get pieces of it and make one or more deals and or bit swap IPFS transfers and get you your content. And then once you built that thing, which is quite a complicated thing to build. You could simply swap out the Merkle bag block service bit swap tree and go IPFS with this thing to do the same thing, but also right. that file. So but that's like a long. That's like that's the post twenty twenty one. We're not even talking about that right now. No, that's a, that's, that's a like good vision. That actually sums it up quite well, and it also clarifies it. it this really what this reference client is really is not IPFS. But we are solving the problems using a number of, of the same components, but it's it's really solving a different problem. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's solving a thing that the file point doesn't do right now, which is like at all, like it like which is like find the content, find the best people to make get the content, make one or more multiple requests and get it. Um, uh, but that's again, I think that's all post twenty twenty one. All right, I think yeah, that's 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 yeah, but like, I mean, one thing we're not talking about building into the scope, I think, is like the idea of like, rather than like, I want to get this SID and everything underneath it to a single miner, like maybe that's so, kind of so high level. Yeah, I mean, because that's like kind of a key feature of this thing eventually. Yes. Right? Um, so, so there's two things that we're going to have to apparently be careful about, but um, understand. One is the Ignite team is starting to do a top level index in miners and wanted to enable within the scope of one graph sync request to continue providing the DAG even as the cost of scales. Um, I offered the caution that, especially as soon as any policy things like pricing, that's for people there, if I feel change, that's going to, they, they just need to be careful about how they design that and when that's possible to do. And it's going to potentially add more complexity to our client to try and guess if that's going to happen or not. But I don't think that actually well, matters. We just go as far as it gets it to us on the minor side. So that's a different strategy because they want to actually, and that's fine, honestly. So we, like, so we should be aware that that happening is also part of the yeah. Although we may still have to cross minors, which will be this top level. Yeah, level. that's what I'm, I'm thinking of. Um, 
or to the protocol that we can find our hand this far. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And and the other thing that's I think the, the real trick is okay, so I started this tag fetch I'm being grassing in my paint. Like, are there places as I keep going that I try to see, oh, is this stuff that I'm going to do that well? So, so even though it keeps going, but I'm still paying for it, are there places that I can get cheaper? Um, where the top of the deck wasn't, but how do I, they actually don't go into this because I want to break for a second and see if I can get this part of my data. And you're not even doing that, that right? Yeah, for a place. But if you don't, like you're potentially way over paying, right? Um, so how do you? Yeah, I mean, or you so, so there's there's things like that. It's going to be really fun, and so it's that first. Like yeah, yeah. Did you say that a DAG would cross it could cross multiple miners? Yep. Is that realistic? I mean, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. It is, and not only that, a DAG could cross multiple. Like it could go from IPFS to five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, like, the recent content is still pinned on IPFS and not in a deal yet, and the old right. data is been. Yeah, I, can, I can see that. I can also I can see, like see that. Part, parts of the DAG being an IPFS and, and Filecoin. I was just thinking that if you have different parts of the same DAG in different from different so miners. For instance, a long blockchain may iteratively the, the delta get sort of put into deals as it happens. Um, oh, and I those are all stored to one miner. I see. And those could and then they could be farmed out to whoever at the time that that yeah. This is the best available. Yeah. Or, or you, you know, you get to the end of one session of a DAG, and you're like, is somebody offering this for cheaper, even if the same miner has it? Right. Unless okay. Miner, yeah. That's interesting. Well, I mean, there's, there's like a bunch of like, there's a whole question of whether you're like, like if you're, you could also deal with not going too deep by asking for not too much. But like, but we're talking about you want to ask for a lot, and then in the middle of it, be like, sorry, I'm done. Okay, so 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 things that that we put out of entity cross art, cross transport. Yeah. Um. Uh. Also. Um. Multi. Multi. Multiple people at once. Yeah. Sure. It's um. We'll get a transcript because we can maybe do a iteration of from transcript to. You know, we don't have a very good kind of computer does maybe the best that we've got in this. Most of that. Um, okay, so 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 multiple peers like that's well, that's not MVP level, and let's ignore that complexity for a moment. Uh, by ignoring these two complexities and the policy of like multiple transfers happening potentially, like does that change the interface in a major way that we're afraid that like we end up like I, I suspect as we have that complexity, it will oh it will change more. Yeah, but I don't think we really lose what we did before. Right? Like that's an iteration on it, so I'm not too worried about that. As a limiting of scope initially, like that's not like going in the wrong direction. We need everything that we're going to build in policy. We just need a lot more later as well. I, it, it partly it has to do with inputs and outputs of policy, right? Like, yeah. I mean, first of all, like it sounds like the initial policy thing is literally like you know, too much necessarily. <laughs> but there's like, well, it's going to it's going to have to it's it's going to have to do some amount of ordering and prioritization. So we'll get back to the list of potential options. Or from the index. Oh, so the index is going to give it multiple results. Yes. And it's going to have to look at those and figure out which one it wants to And there's only one indexer that we're talking to initially, which is just our index. We may end up with a federation, but they should all be completely Yeah. Yeah. So maybe like a DNS record that actually can resolve to one of several different actual places. The reason I ask the, 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 the complexity that's contained in that is. If I'm doing multiple indexers, I get potentially answers at different times. I get a stream of answers from multiple people versus, which is something we're gonna have to support eventually versus I talk to one indexer, it's like literally like an HTTP call, I get my results back and now I make my decision based on that. Let me not see bad to support eventually. The, yeah. The sort of I mean, level up for our current routing interface, which is instead of getting back a channel of uh, pure IDs, we get back a channel of these record objects that are, you know, who has it and that data. Totally. And I would rather that be a channel rather than like a single return array in like a future. Yep. Yeah. So, so, so why don't we build that? That seems like a reasonable thing. Uh, yeah. 
So that, that doesn't mean that the indexer, the logic is not simply look at a set and make a decision. It's like, look at it. It's you're like, about right now, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, things come in, more. figure out what you want to do. And like, yeah. Can we reuse the way that that's happening in the going to be the sort of deal with that right now? I think so it does the effectively the same thing. Right. We've got a logic that we can provide for the basic set. Yeah, we'll we just have to add the price. Because that matters, right? We want to prioritize the lowest price. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that we can do as a application that may make sense is um, when you get multiple uh, options within the same protocol, mm -hmm. do you want to get all of those to a transport? Like a transport, if so, and in particular, I think like bit swap. Like, you're like, great, I have these three bit swap pairs. Mm -hmm. Does that go to three different bit swap transports, or does that go into one? Like bit swap transfer of a session with these three tiers. Three different. So, one thing that I'm pretty. How, how is bit swap transfers? I mean, my, one other thing that I'm pretty religious about is that we need to refactor bit swaps if we can't. You're not using bit swap sessions. It's, we are the bit swap session, right? At least that's my. Again, but like I'm assuming bit swap is probably post end of year. I don't know. I could be wrong. Uh, I'm optimistic that there's some part of bit swap we can integrate before then, right? Okay. Because, like, I think the MVP could be a lot better than what are we going to put the other two? I mean, the, we're putting it into other things, trying it out, trying to operationalize so, it. So, so we'll see, we'll see. It. But, but, but the reality is, if we expose it on gateway too early, we're running it. Um, what? If, if we just go to gateway and like okay. integrating it into things, that's where, especially the bit box side, gets unhappy if they go and get best. Uh, is now worse than it is for Brave. Right? That, that's where we created this inversion that people are afraid of, which is if you're on Brave and have no FS installed, you have worse experience than if you don't have it installed and you sort of do that. So there's only so much inversion that we'll be able to get away with before we also support. Um, so, so one of the reasons that we might end up prioritizing integrating IPFS best content in this uh, client before we do all the gateway integration is I foresee more pushback on continuing gateway integration than on like the best solutions. Can I ask a question when you when you say that are you talking about at that point you add bit swap, you're not integrating in the go IP press. You just add bit swap. Yes. Yeah. I mean the other thing is that if as soon as you add bit swap you need to be doing you need to be thinking of this thing as a request planner as opposed to a single transfer. Yep. Um, which is different than, I mean, the nice thing about RASP is you can think of it, you can avoid the problem of like multiple requests. Right. So, uh, for like you are splitting up the content you're fetching into like small bits, because like bit swap is inherently like that. There's, you only get a block at a time. And so if you want to die, you have to keep lots of bits. So you need, you need to go over that. We're not good. Well, I mean, that's another question, right? I would not do that. I would have this thing do the traversal. Like, like my hope is that go Merkle bag, go block service, bit swap sessions all go out. And I would rather not build in that direction unless we have like a really clearly defined scope for that. Um, I mean, ideally, if we can fit things within a transport, like, like, sorry, there's another question, like, like, so that. Well, I guess if we're doing that stuff, we're not doing paid transfer for any of it, right? So we're not going to wrap it and go to data transfer. The bit swaps are. Yeah. Yeah, at least initially. I mean, the hope is that you would. like, But like the idea is that go data transfer wraps a transport, this concept of a transport, which is like an arbitrary yeah. thing. And you could, you know, and yeah, anyway. Um, but, but there's also questions about what, like, how, how, like, can you embed that versus the current routing setup, right? Um, I think there was a sort of discussion of if you were imagining doing a meter um, transfer over HTTP, the having it be framed within an external channel, um, like your data transfer of the signal channel, uh, versus having that somehow be able to be in line um, would be less risky. Yeah. You could do it as like headers or something. So there may be a refactor that happens there, and it'll all be Yeah, headers are. Well, yeah, 
Yes, headers are already embedded in graphs like It's just that there's also a couple of extra things that data transfer needs that Grassing doesn't do. So that's why there's a little PP right now. And I totally agree with them that we should be getting rid of that as a concept of data transfer. But then, like, the idea of so what's the right order of that versus the retrieval line of relation? Like, I guess the question is, like, should we be in isolation try and say, can we make a difficult transport? Can we do refactors on graph sync and the data transfer to get them closer to what we want? And as then one, then that makes the retrieval line better, or should we do anything like that? Great question. <laughs> like, this is the road mapping that I said we need to do. Right. This is what we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, well, first of all, like, you know, and again, like, part of it gets into like, what can we get done? Before the end of the year, if that's what our scope is for right now for our planning, I mean, I think we need to plan farther, but like, but like, but like, like, so because, like, for in my mind, if we build this thing right and then we're going to operationalize it by putting it on gateways just for profit, right? Like, it's not the gateways are going to do their own IPFS fetching in the fall and then use this thing separately to get funding, right? That was the thing we just talked about. The use case. If that's the use case, like. Actually, doing that gets us to the is is to the end of the year because that actually means like taking just purely the file point vetting and like the policy around that and like testing it and making it work in production, mm -hmm. which is probably a, an undertaking. Like I could be wrong. I mean, like especially if people start hitting up gateways to get all the shit in the cloud. So my 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 thought here, right, is that that's maybe. Um, I could be being under ambitious. So I, 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 I don't think that's true. I like, I think, I think that's probably correct that we certainly take till the end of the year to get there. My guess though is that that's a couple of people till the end. Like it takes time, but it doesn't take all of us. And the question true. is then do we split where we have some people operationalizing client and other people able to spend time getting the next transports and getting the data transfer structure to where we need it so that then we can integrate those into the client later. Um, I don't think those are. Yeah, I don't think they are either. For each individual, they're probably focused on one of those two, but yeah, um, you know, we're continuing to have people join our team. We're going to yeah. continue to have manpower. Let's share a lot. The only question is where, like, um, like, uh, is there some point where, like, people are working? And the interesting thing about the, the data transfer refactor is that's something that could be done completely independently where you're not touching the original the like line code base yep. it's probably other things where you like you need to be in the like if we're adding bits to the client you need to be in the client code base making changes and then how does that work with like people who are trying to get this thing off? a bit swap transport could also be fully independent right i could make a lightweight bit swap fetcher that does a one-on-one -on -one fetch only implements the like one to half um, doesn't do the session. Like, I could, we could do that wholly out totally. of the transport, and that's a separate. That's a separate undertaking, too. Um, yes. and All these things are things that we have. So, that's sort of been my thought is like, we shouldn't mm -hmm. multiply these necessarily. Um, yeah. that, that we've got three things that, you know, none of those seem super controversial in some sense. Like, being able to have the transport subset of this one as a thing that you can test individually, and like, great, I can pull this block from. This year, I can like pull a string of blocks from this year, um, but I can do it in the context of you know, like what, what we've said as our transport interface. That's like a nice, useful thing. Yeah. Yeah. Very lightweight for the current idea. Then you can test the session, like common session of the Yeah, several times. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like said, we all want to try. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Like, I mean, getting like full level involved, I've always called yeah. that. Like, yeah. just building that yeah. would be super awesome. There's a bunch of things that like like you want to expose that the current interface even without sessions doesn't expose like I want to ask this page for this yes. so I think maybe we I don't know we, I feel like we're all sort of aligned ish maybe we should write up the uh, next like what falls into an MVP and what these other sub projects that we think can be independent on so like we've got this MVP and then we have a few separate things that aren't necessarily for people client but like we've got a data transfer factor how long and how big is that. We've got potentially a bit swap refactor or something like that. We've got gateway integration, potentially for file point content, and then we've got the service next level um, and longer control. Um, so maybe we, we have adopted those as, you know, they're, yeah. I, I want to not call them milestones, but like, you know, these are, here are, you know, three or four projects. Uh, we've got an MVP of a client that we're going to use, you know, with the goal of 
file point on the prequel as a supplement for neighboring the data. Um, we've got, I think, browsing. We've got the twelve. Sorry, go data transfer. Um, yeah. Embed better. Uh, it's what allowed the core transport. And then uh, conditioned on the initial MVP is like copyright operationalization of this. So some of the things you can sort of validate the value of the thing. Um, yeah. so, so we've got two that are, we've got, we've got, we've got like the, the set of two things of this very minimal testing thing and then the next integration that we make. That second part we should validate with the product and that is the right first space. Yeah. Um, and then we've got these two. It would be helpful, I think, in general, especially planning masses here, like to think about what are the, for to understand what is the product timeline for when they need different, like like doing this low level bit swap, doing the data transfer factor delivers like absolutely zero, like immediate product value, right? Like, or not absolutely zero, but you know what I mean? Like, there's no user feature that comes out of that for the most part immediately. Um, Probably it sets you up to a user feature three months later. Oh, or, uh, there's the other one, which is which is uh, in uh, um, having the reference provider be able to ingest IPS bit swap content. Um, so either from uh, Hypernode database or um, from like a Pintada like um, provider, like starting to get bit swap reference into the index. That's a separate thing. Of once we have the reference provider, there's the integration of that. Like minor, but there's also the integration of that into um, someone who's not like this one. And that would not necessarily be the client would know what to do with it. Right, yeah, yeah. The client would know what to do with it. Okay. But, but, right, like that is totally a separate thing that maybe yeah. falls more on this like provider Great. stream. Yeah. And, and once you've got that, you know, you could imagine having this very lightweight thing that goes to the answer to try and find us in. Yeah. And then does that very lightweight bit swap transport as its only thing. Yeah. And now you've got this very lightweight way to fetch this from your original. Yes. The next step from the table. Um, and then you can go in several directions. You can, uh, make the end and you've got an integration and then policy. And, and you, can you, really, oh, you can test these two things. Yeah. Um, so you're not mixing protocols there. You're putting yeah. another thing that you can get bits off on it. And then you build the orchestration because now you know what to fetch from an index with bits off. Well. You know what to fetch with browsing. Right. Then you can deal with policy. You can deal with the transaction on that. But um, doing just bits off at a very low Prequel with no cache and not all of the go FDFS commands. Like, that's like we have a JS bit swap sort of, although it's bigger. Well, I guess connecting to peers in that context is going to be fine anyway. So, we're not yeah. that. But, um, but, but for a really lightweight, like, tiny go embedded, like, you've got some options. For yeah, it. I mean, especially for like the gateway. I mean, I think the gateway actually liked Chuck to like with us. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. All right, so lots of work. We're trying to get some. Individual, uh, yeah. concrete size and bounded projects. So, yeah, and then we can come back again when it's a more same time for Andrew, uh, yeah. maybe tomorrow, um, and do a second round that's a little bit more formal with some, you know, a dot or something, maybe. Uh, yes. yeah. um, that was all big things that we created. Do we I'm have to you know how payment channel integrates? Curious to know how the payment channel integrates with all this. That is a great question. Uh, <laughs> there's some interesting stuff, Andrew. There's like a bunch of stuff online. I mean, payment channels integrate through Go Data Transfer. That is the rule, basically. I mean, but that's going to that's my hope is that the, the entire point of Go Data Transfer is to provide a control layer by which you can orchestrate a payment channel through uh, some kind of protocol. So there's there's external groups doing payment. Yes, and that is the that will land when it lands, right? Um, the assumption and, and, and generally paper retrieval from anyone other than a super high download client like the gateway is going to be pretty useless until that stuff lands. Because the, the nice thing about the gateway is they're going to have paper channels for everything because like they're going to get but so I think there's two things that, that we probably should scope around this. One is what is the right books on the client? For a client having the interface to ask for a voucher, maybe in sure. some context from some external process or machine or something. Um, and so what does that API look like? Right. So so I think the thought is the in the retrieval client code itself, it shouldn't really think about this beyond like a voucher, like you need to get permission from some external thing. And so then separately, what is that external thing? 
that's like a light, like maybe it starts as low as light or something even lighter than that, that it, or like something that, you know, can follow the chain, but manages a wallet and manages some imaging. Like what is, like, is there a thing that you want a developer to run that is that here you've got your wallet, you've got your payment channel state, you can take in requests for a voucher, do what you need to on payment channels and get a voucher back out. I thought we were going to make that even more abstract and be like, you will provide a thing that does that. And I think we will need a reference one to test this. Yeah, that's true. Um, and hopefully, I mean, you could say what a slide is a reference enough. I mean, it does the things. So, but, but is that like, that's still a lot of machine learning. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's not more than machine learning. I don't know. What it, yeah, I mean, it, like, like, it, there's definitely like there's a couple of modules that you could extract from Lotus and put them together. I don't know whether you want to do that, like what you gain from that, especially. So maybe we just do flip play. Yeah. Be to run. But but I do think there's likely, you know, they, they need to be running that behind something that's like authenticating the requests from their user or whatever. And, um, well, yeah, I mean, like you have a whole bunch of code in go go markets right now. But there's a bunch of like there's a lot of like things you need to validate when someone asks for a voucher. Like, did they send you enough bytes before you pay for it? And did they like if somebody's like the way the retrieval thing says they send you a thousand bytes and they send you a voucher request that says I'm not gonna send you any more data until you send me a voucher for this amount of money. And they ask for a hundred dollars for like three bytes, you need to not send them that hundred dollar voucher because that's gonna be agreed upon. Like the other problem is like what what's the level? Like I thought this was like one thing of like now payments happen delivered by the developer, but like is there going to be ongoing communication through the whole transfer that happens between the client and the developer? Absolutely. Um, like payment right now, the entire system of payment in 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 Filecoin is based on the idea that you're going to make incremental payments, and that's the only reason. But but there's incremental payments for the developer, like the developer, like right, there's the stack. I know the stack is pretty big, so I'm going to keep doing the incremental payments, assuming the client's getting it optimistically. Like there, there's potentially a lot of complexity here where you just, the developer doesn't want to have to, you know, block on a, the RPC from the client who's, you know, 100 milliseconds away from them every thousand bytes, certainly. Right? Like you, you've added, once you have three parties and the wallet's not in the same place as the person downloading, you've got this other latency source between them. And so how do you not interrupt the thing that's there? Like can the developer optimistically respond on the payment channel? Assuming that this is, you know, this user has already paid them. They don't want to pause. Like, if the user, if, if the counterparty is like, great, I gave the thousand I made for the next payment before I get more, the developer may well send that payment immediately, right? Like, because they're like, great, yeah, the user's just downloading. They checked in with me first. I know this is a big download. Like, and then maybe the user can report the stats and stay in touch so they don't lose too much. But um, it's unclear. Yeah, that's, 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 that, that's like a, another orchestration of payments, right? Like that, 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 that is that is potentially quite complicated because like, yeah, you don't want, like on the one hand, you don't want to block on the other hand, like you probably don't want to like, probably need to have some kind of check-in so that you're like, not like just letting them download a 10 gigabyte thing that- Wait, so the end's currently, there's no further check right? Yeah, well, so then, but, but, in a CDM, like the, the assumption is that you're paying Google or Amazon if you trust. And like your CDN here is like not necessarily trustworthy. In any case, like, like you sure, know, but, but if we're going to get the performance, you need some, you'd like it, it seems like if, if you suddenly got this like simple thing, like the website, like I, I, I don't know how Netflix is going to actually stream the video if they're having to check in regularly between some DAP developer server, which the thought is they shouldn't need a high power server, but it's like, and, and potentially that needs to be decentralized. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of things like somehow yeah. the client can generate a thing that causes the like there's like there's a bunch of trustless mechanisms for doing all this. It's fine. Like we don't need to get into the how. The idea is that data transfer becomes this layer upon which you can add any abstract payment orchestration mechanism, yeah. and you know it's left to whomever is going to implement that to do that. But that can be a potentially complicated mechanism. Right now, we implement one in retrieval client of local markets that does, you know, this basic like checking of data between two parties. Um, but presumably there will be more. That the, the, the intent is that anyone can have uh, additional payment mechanisms at some point. Um, 
But all of that to be said, like there are some interesting questions just in the immediate sense. So first of all, I, so payment channels, I, I'm, I'm actually, one thing I'm really interested in is like, what is our view about things, about retrievals for things that don't have on seal? Because like, we don't actually have any way to find that, find that out yet, but if you get a, if you do a retrieval that has, all, that does not have an on-seal copy, the user experience is just a joke. I mean, you're just gonna be hanging for hours. Okay. But, but then you, you know, hopefully after the one second time out, you go in for the next copy. Okay, so you put a time out and you trust. That's fair. Yeah, there's also people who are very upset about the idea that you, that like right now providers can get that payment for unsealing. There's totally no trust mechanism in that, or there is a trust mechanism in that. It's, it's problematic. So. so I'm just, just curious. Is it, so it's, I'm trying to figure out is, are we looking at, at a pay as you go and then would pay for chunks of data as you download it? Or is there a way to pre-negotiate a price for an entire DAG that you want to download? I, it's totally, I mean, it's, like, it's, it's all about whether you are prepared to trust the person you're downloading from, right? That they're not going to run away with your money and not serve you. Right, like I mean, the, the like the simple version would be like I pay you X much and you send me the thing. The problem is like like what if you just don't send me the thing, right? Like that's that's the fundamental like problem of fair exchange. Um, so like our current solution for that in a trustless world is to essentially do it in in increments and essentially bootstrap trust by doing a series of like you know, micro payments, and then slowly doing bigger and bigger pieces. And that's how retrieval works currently. Like the first payment is at like a thousand bytes, the second payment is at two thousand bytes. You know, and those, those can you know, the third is is for you know more data, and the fourth is for even more data. You know, because at that point you're like, well, both parties are behaving responsibly. Probably they're going to keep behaving responsibly, and then like the only problem there is the last. Yeah. Right, the, 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 that last, last flight is really expensive. So yeah, and also like there, yeah, there's no way to deal with that last one properly. Like that's the unsolvable problem in the world of fair exchange apparently. But like anyway, like what we're doing is something called optimistic fair exchange. Um, there are other there are other versions that are like add a third party to the mix where nobody gets you know or send encrypted data and then unlock it you know via when you get a payment you know like that kind of thing where you like. Client knows they have the data. They can send the um, the you know the payment, and then the provider sends the unlock code. And the provider could get off with out sending so, the so the other the other thing, just yeah. as we go deep into payment channels, um, we will. I think there is this expectation or hope that replication systems uh, happen in the this half of this year as well, and that is seen by product as a potential uh, way to mitigate some of this trust stuff, which is. There's a prioritization of miners that have prioritization, which means things like DealBot have been able to do retrieval and have that work. Um, and so potentially, if you've got that, where you're prioritizing miners that have prioritization, you can say, great, right, above this prioritization, what that means is I'm just going to pay all of it in advance and just hope that I can only. Um, and, yeah. and so maybe our first pass is that rather than trying to, and, and that makes our lives easier in some sense. And, and that's like itself another like tension. This is like, you know, like, wait. Reputation versus trustless mechanisms. It's like an ongoing, like much larger, like conflict in terms of how we do things. But so potentially, it means that we can go for a iteration of less than yeah, less Totally. totally. Uh, I mean, again, like my view is the first iteration of this is for paid retrieval is to use the software we have. So, anyway, you know, <laughs> um, which is totally, you know, will work for file point miners and file point content it, as long as you create a new payment channel and have a load of that the wallet. Well, it, it, in, unless you've got these as separate. Places, right? If the wallet is in a different, is on a developer's machine, this is a different like setup. Like if, if you've got your client that's now in one place, you've mm -hmm. got your developer who's got a wallet somewhere else and you've got your client has three separate parties and these ones are high latency, like that previous mechanism potentially blocks and potentially has different races that we play. Yeah. Like we've assumed that you're talking, you're thinking about the exactly the same place yeah. and you are being able to really say. So in this case, you're talking about a wallet that is not running on the yes. client's machines. And that, and that is already like, <laughs> Part of our expected topology of this. Um, yeah. And so potentially you solve that by saying in the first pass, we just prepay. Okay. Um, There's also, I mean, you have to write new software there anyway, because then the payment channel is not between the client yep. and the client, it's between the developer. 
Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah, that's that use case is is important to support and is also one where like there are a lot of complications and probably but we'll leave that for like what's restart because well, the gateways run in a lot of places on Cloudflare and presumably and, and potentially even on headquarters that have much less state and are not going to run a full Lotus like. And so there's going to be some machine that we run into the VM that is holding the wallet, but that's not where their gateways are running. The Web3 storage unit? Because, like, you need to actually make changes in Lotus itself to store. Yes, I know more. Okay. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying that there may be a different topology that we could ask for as we go yeah. through. Again, again that, none of that feels like it needs to be reviewed by an engineer to me. Like, yeah. I, you know, because you also need reputation services and they are, they will exist by an engineer, but they do not exist yet. I mean, they're starting to, there is still that that has a basic yeah. score of reputation. Sure. Yeah. And I understand. I'm just saying, like, with, there's a lot of moving parts there, and I don't see us doing that. Yeah. Like, we could totally have the point pull, like, there is an API that's around the right. Um, and the thought is there's multiple reputation services that show up, and we've got the first one, and we've got you know, not necessarily the final like data data structure that we're going to be using long term, but you know, there's enough that you could have to like verify based on the information today, and that may make sense when we're evaluating our progressing numbers. Is what you want to have verification for? Yeah. Yes, I would. If that's what we're going to do, I would simply say the product needs to say this is how we want to do it, and they need to fight with the people who will object to doing it. How else are you going to choose miners? What? How else are you going to prioritize miners? I mean, it's not just about prioritizing miners. It's like that. Uh, I think reputation services, right? Uh, yes, um, but I'm talking about the the question of like how you're going to do the payment, which is uh, yeah, yeah. that you're going to completely rely on reputation and fund that. But let's worry on that a little bit later yeah. right? because that's not an MVP. But MVP probably does involve talking about talking about reputation. reputation already in order to to know which miner to prioritize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. because I don't know what else we would use to sort those price. Sure, they're all free. Okay. okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, there, well, there's also another, like, I mean, I'm assuming our initial version is only asking one. The other thing you could do is ask everyone if it's free. It's the downside. That's true. Uh, but who do you ask first? Rather than spending out, you know, 50 it's, it's like you're going to need some yeah. kind of prioritization of which are you spend for. I guess so. I mean, I guess you do need a nice list of where the best miners in general. Uh, oh, wow. and, and the other thing with that API is going to have is just close to uh, so continent, continent and some sense of location um, so that you can prioritize by who's closest to you. And that's not in the index of Okay. Is there any plan to put that in the index or is that be useful information? It potentially could be a metadata. Right now, we want the index to have relatively small metadata. Right. Um, and I'm worried that would quickly become too far. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Well, also theoretically, one day all the events are just geographical. Like, this is my well, is So, so potentially they could, I guess, themselves sort somehow based on the location they ask me to find that. But the index are going to prioritize reference by their Yeah. But, uh, okay, so then the other one that I guess is on the indexer thread is we do at some point want to engage some of the virtual kind of people on what, and this is like this virtual market thing. This will happen, I guess, in the next couple months once we get a virtual market again, because I think there is some thought of over there, which is how does the indexing system, subsystem, get a finder speed on the subsequent virtual, or like how do we incentivize uh, the indexing subsystems to provide indexing services? Provide right, indexing? Mm -hmm. I mean, good morning, good morning, folks, and we will end.